Hey everybody, it's Emma. Thank you very much for joining me in this video where I will be sharing with you my experience and more kind of thorough review of the Ordinary's base products. There will be timestamps in the description box if you want to jump around. So before we dive in, I have oily skin. I have issues with foundation breaking down, not lasting, especially on my nose which of course is the place with the most discoloration that I would like to cover. <laughs> uh, for foundations, I tend to prefer something that looks like skin, that doesn't look too makeup-y. I prefer a sheerer to medium coverage for the most part. Um, so that is the perspective through which I am viewing these products. So The Ordinary has two primers in their collection at the moment. When I first got them, I filmed a wear test, so the first time I ever used them, I filmed it for y'all, um, and I used the Serum Foundation from The Ordinary, which of course I will talk about when we get to that point in the video. Um, so check that out, I will link it in a card and in the description box if you want to see that. And uh, basically, I found that the primers not only helped the serum foundation to look much better on my skin, but it also helped the foundation to last. I have played with both of the uh, primers with different foundations, and I have found that they both help to keep the longevity of my makeup. I end up with foundation on my nose at the end of the day, which is this side of miraculous. Now, I do find that I get quite shiny with both of the primers, but the foundation does not break down. I can blot my skin or powder and take care of the shine. But if you have oily skin, know that these are not mattifying primers. So the first primer I want to mention is the High Adherence Silicone Primer. It comes in a squeezy tube. It has this kind of lotion-y look and feel to it. It almost has a cooling sensation on my skin, and it is $4.90. All of these products contain 30 mil. My issue with this primer, it was fine the first few times I used it, but after that, ever since, every time I've used it, it has balled up, it has gathered, it has pilled. I've tried a few different things to see if any of them help. I have tried blending it in, I've tried patting it in, I've tried not wearing an SPF underneath it, this queen of SPF. I went that far, folks. <laughs> uh, I've tried adjusting my skincare the night before, not using my retinol, not using uh, my exfoliants, and nothing seems to work. And I don't know if I, I don't know what is causing that, if it is just because this is a cheap primer and that's going to happen, or if there is some, it's just reacting poorly to my skin or, you know, something in my skincare routine that skipping it for a day is not going to remedy. Uh, if you have tried this and have had that issue, found a way around it, let me know because I I really want to love this. I like how it feels on my skin. I like how it makes my makeup look and how it helps my makeup to last. Honestly, I prefer this one, except of course I can't really use it under makeup because it gathers and I wouldn't want to put it on top of my SPF because I feel like it's just rubbing it right off. So currently I cannot for myself recommend this and I probably wouldn't repurchase it unless one of you lovely people has uh, a remedy because I like it. Um, the second primer, the one that I'm wearing today in fact, is the High Spreadability Fluid Primer. This comes in a dropper style bottle. It's a very liquidy uh, fluid, just slightly thicker than water consistency. This one has a little bit of a smell. If you've ever used the NYX Pore Filler Primer, it smells just like that. I don't find that this gathers or pills. I've had uh, an issue a couple of times if I put it on 
right after I put on my SPF moisturizer. But if I even leave that for you know a minute or two, I haven't had an issue. I also find that this is easier to pat into my skin. It blends in better that way. That particular primer is the most expensive out of all of these products actually at $7.90. But again, I, it's the first, these are both the first primers that I have used that have actually helped the longevity of my makeup. So for now, I will continue to use that and I will probably repurchase it in the future. I'm very interested to see how that is on my skin as we move into cooler months. My skin does tend to uh, become a little bit less oily, a little bit more dry as we move into the winter. So if that trend continues, I'm very curious to see how that reacts to my skin because that does I'm pretty shiny at the end of the day when I use that. Now this will be a nice segue into the foundations. The Ordinary has two foundations at the moment. They have the Serum Foundation, which is a sheerer, lighter weight, fluid consistency. And they also have the Coverage Foundation, which is a little bit thicker, has a little bit more coverage to it. They both come in this squeezy tube. Sorry, mine are a little bit gross, uh, but you know, I use them a lot. <laughs> and they have 21 shades at the moment in their range. The shade names are um, written with a number indicating the shade and then a letter indicating the undertone. So the shade that I have in both of these is 1.1N, which is fair neutral. Three of the shades also have a highlight contained in them that's indicated by an s for silver or a g for gold i haven't experienced those i don't know what that is like what they look like how they wear on the skin according to the ordinary's website they are working on bringing those highlighting fluids i guess out separately so you can customize the shade that works for you so let's start with the serum foundation this foundation costs six dollars and seventy cents I have done a wear test with this foundation, which again, I will link in a card and also in the description box below. This is the foundation that spoke to me the most. It, it claims to be a lightweight skin-like formula that has a light to medium coverage. And I think all of that is true for the most part. When I first was using this, it was really, really beautiful. It blended into the skin so nicely and really did look like skin. It wore pretty well on its own. You can see that in that wear test video. Uh, but after a few weeks, I noticed that it started to get this kind of grainy texture. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Actually, let me put this on my other hand in case that helps because this one's covered in primer. Um, it has a very fluid, runny consistency to it. Yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera. You see that almost, uh, I mean, grainy texture is really the only way I can describe it. So that does kind of defeat the looks like skin purpose. However, once I got the primers and started using the serum foundation over the primers, it took it away, made it last longer, look even better on my skin. So I would maybe say that it requires, at least for me, the serum foundation requires a primer. Now, if you get the serum foundation and one of the primers, you're going to be spending between $12 and $15 for your base, which is still a lot less money than any mid-range high-end foundation. So it's it's really up to you. Now, the coverage foundation is $6.90. Still a good idea to shake it up. It has a slightly thicker consistency. You can see it's not, I mean, it's running a little bit, but not as quickly. <laughs> uh, it does blend into the skin really well. I haven't noticed any of that kind of grainy texture issue so far. I haven't had it quite as long as the serum. But um, again, over the primers, it, it just blends in very nicely. It looks like skin. It has a little bit more coverage than the serum foundation. It is kind of blended in. It is what I'm wearing on my face at the moment. My one criticism of the coverage foundation, at least as 
far as my experience goes, is throughout the day, it doesn't wear quite as nicely as the serum. I find the serum will look pretty much the same from dawn to dusk, if you will, um, but the coverage foundation, some days, not all days, I'll get into that in a second, will look more makeup-y. Maybe that's to be expected because it has more coverage to it, but it will kind of gather, especially on my nose and between my eyebrows and sometimes on my chin. So that kind of problem area that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it doesn't wear as well there when the serum foundation wears perfectly there if I use the primer. So bottom line, I definitely enjoy all of these products. I mean, except for the issue that I have with this primer, I like all of these products. I think my favorite is the serum foundation, uh, especially with the high spreadability primer. I really like the primer too. I like how I will have foundation on my nose at the end of the day. I have tried those primers under other foundations and they've worked just as nicely. But here's my caveat. I don't think these are gonna replace my higher end foundations because like the issue with the coverage foundation, I feel like I can't trust them. You know what I mean? I feel like if I grab my Buxom Show Some Skin Foundation, which is my current favorite, I know exactly how that's going to wear. I feel completely confident putting that on my skin. I love using that actually with the high spreadability fluid primer. Um, I know exactly how that's going to look at the end of the day. I can trust it. I find if I'm rushing in the morning, getting ready, I am less likely, I, I don't want to use the ordinary uh, foundations because it might not work out so well that day. I feel like it's a little bit more hit and miss um, when I use them. I do tend to prefer blending them in with fingers or using a sponge like this one from Real Techniques. I feel like that makes the foundation look the best, but there are still some days that even if I'm using them in the exact same way, they just, they don't look as nice for, for no apparent reason. I'm not sure what that is exactly. If there are just ingredients in there that are missing because it's a $6 foundation. That being said, I think these are the best $6 foundations I've ever tried in my entire life. And I'm not, you know, that genuinely, if you don't want to spend $30, $40, $50 on a foundation, I think you will be perfectly happy with this if you have, uh, if there's a shade that works for you. Personally, I will continue to use these. I might even repurchase that serum foundation, but they're not going to completely replace my higher end foundations, if that makes any sense. And I think that that is all I have to say about those. If you have any questions, um, I would love to hear your own experiences with these products. Uh, if you have any comments, if you have any feedback, anything that could make these kind of review-ish, I'm calling this a review-ish video, uh, um, uh, let me know so that I can make these better and give you the information that is actually helpful for you. So I hope there was some helpful information in there and um, I really appreciate your time watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.